Good afternoon and welcome to Vicarage Road as Watford take on the Lily Whites Preston North End in match day number 35 of the 2022 to 23 EFL Championship season. Yep, back again for another match day vlog. Um, it's been a while, but felt like it was the right time to settle back home under the uh, Vicarage Road end and ultimately it's 8th against 12th this time with the two teams separated by just four points Watford on 50 with 34 played Preston on 46 with 34 played um, of course Preston as well had that um, clash um, against uh, Wigan last weekend which they won 2-1 Watford, on the other hand, with a 1-0 defeat to Sheffield United. Unfortunately, um, that own goal from Ryan Porteous, who's been one of the standout performance uh, players of the last few weeks. Really, really unlucky with that one. You've got to look at our marking for that, leaving McBurney in too much space. And ultimately, um, how Porteous manages to get it in between both of his legs and then in between both of Backman's legs before, um, you know... If, fruitless um, effort from Chowdhury to clear it off the line. It's just a real shame. But Preston um, have been known for a lot of nil-nil draws. Um, they were very, very tight defensively earlier on in the season. And their manager, Ryan Lowe, has you know, got, got them playing decent. So it's not going to be easy. But on paper, you would say, with a home fixture, uh, uh, and you know, it's that time of the season now where it really counts. It's the run-in. It's where points are precious and it's opportunity aplenty. So, look, it's a pretty grim read this season for Watford. We're not where we want to be, which is, of course, automatics. And playoffs is looking a bit unlikely right now. But the key thing is momentum. If we win games in a row consecutively, then we can gather momentum. And who knows? Something crazy could happen towards the kind of climax of this season where we scrape, scrape into those playoff spots and ultimately momentum is the key for a chance of getting through those playoffs and getting to the promised land of the Premier League. Now, our squad right now is very far away from competing in the Premier League, but hopefully if we put in that effort and, and really pull together as one unit, then when we do get into the top division, we can reinvest and you know, have a bit of money pumped in um, because right now it's 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 pretty weak. I mean, our season has been defined by injuries. We've got another one to Edo Kayembe, who's now out for the season. So really frustrating that one. Um, also, Espria has not been um, involved with the team and that's just been a bit of an annoying one because he's got great creativity and flair. Um, but hopefully another good game for Mario Gaspar today, who I think has been much, much better since he moved position into a slightly deeper midfield role um, compared to that full-back, right-back. Um, and talking of right-back, you know, you've got to say, in that position, Morris has been superb and he's been very, very reliable um, and, and another good performance in the game against West Brom. Um, but we're hoping to get back to that kind of grit that we showed. We didn't play brilliantly against West Brom, as good of a, as a win that was. And Ken Semmer, we just looked so much better uh, as a team with him in there. But ultimately, it didn't matter that we were slightly second best against West Brom because we just dug in and you got to buy the ticket to the raffle. You know, just have a shot and sometimes it will cannon off the post or hit a defender as it did with Eric Peters' own goal. So we really have to, after that Sheffield United defeat, try and bounce back, try and put in a great performance today. Um, and look, Keenan Davis, it's been a while since he's scored. He's great with his hold-up play, but can we get him into the game more can we get him have, having shots more and really just muscling um, defenders off in and getting shots at goal? Because we've got a great squad. Um, it has been played by injuries and I'm hoping that these individual players now, you know, we've got a quality player in, 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 in our locker with the signing of Henrik Arouge. So if he does get minutes today, let's use him correctly. Because recently it feels like he's been kind of wasted a little bit not quite knowing his role in the team so yeah and I wanted to see his mile Asar score today of course um, because he has been a bit up and down this season but he's had good moments he scored against West Brom um, and ultimately I think he does get more slack than he you know really deserves but 
he is our most expensive ever signing. So there's, you know, a bit of expectation that comes with that. Um, and I've got him in uh, EFL fantasy, gaffer, football, um, fantasy football. So I'm hoping he scores some goals. Um, but yeah, Preston will be interesting. I think they are a sort of team that, are, you know, solid unit. Um, and they've got some decent players in there. Robbie Brady um, was sent off against Wigan, but um, they had the game in midweek. So I think unless it was a, a straight red, he, he might be back for the game um, if it was two yellows. And also we've got Liam Delap. Um, ultimately, that will be, um, you know, interesting. Ex, you know, Rory, uh, son, uh, ex Premier League legend at Stoke. So he's he's a decent player. And of course, they've got Troy Parrott up front um, uh, and Ched Evans. So some names that people have heard of, whether or not they're going to really, you know, Put, put us to the sword we just don't know but this Watford defence has been shipping a lot of goals recently so a clean sheet would be lovely a win would be you know exactly what we need and hopefully what we'll get so I'll say Watford 2 Preston North End 0 goal scorers both coming from Ismail Asar uh, and we'll start off with a goal on the 53rd minute and then the next goal the 87th minute Come on, you ones. Let's do this. I've got to say, Watford, I'm absolutely loving the team news lineup. So, a rouge starts, and also we've got a good start for loser come on and we've got a somber longer on the bench if need be it's looking lovely come on you horns Smile Asar, come on! You're better than that! Watford, wake up! That was not the time for the back heel. Just be sensible, but be quick and sensible. Come on. Another path that's misplaced. Oh. Referee, come on. Preston's substitution replacing number nine, Chad Evans. Mm. Number 18, Ryan Nixon. <laughs> Watch 
Waterford substitution replacing number 23, Ismail Assar. Let's welcome number 34, Brit Asomalonga. Come on, Brit. It's your time to shine, mate. <laughs> this game has been a blunt, blunt affair, so sharpen it up for us. <laughs> well, we said, this is nothing off, man. We're almost at double figures for wow. like ten, almost 10 minutes. So, Come on. Well, that means I don't know. But, but it's not okay. Come on, Watford. Come on, Watford. Come on, Watford. Call for the pass. Give options. What was that free kick for then? The softest decisions today has been outrageous. Full time at Vicarage Road. It's finished Watford nil, Preston North End nil. Well, another stinking game and another two points dropped from Watford in a disjointed, frustrating, and quite frankly, concerning performance. As the Hornets just really waste another opportunity to close the gap on the playoff race. And those are the kind of games you look back on at the end of the season and think, yeah, really shouldn't have allowed that opportunity to pass up. There was very few chances in the game from either side, really. I mean, first half, chances for Ched Evans and Fernandez for the visitors. And then second half for Watford, I mean, Pedro had an opportunity that was well saved by Woodman. Saar had a, a volley that was put wide after a, a cross from Semmer. First half, Pedro had a header. Um, and then second half, there was a long shot from Hoot. But, oh, that was just not exactly enthralling. Um, I don't know what the problem is right now, but ultimately the players don't look like they have a connection. They don't look like they want to fight. They look just uninterested. The game started off, and I've got to say, a very fitting tribute to the late, great John Motson, OBE. Um, the voice of football, what a man. Um, and ultimately, he'll have uh, had time covering that game. He'd have, he'd have struggled because there was very little action. Um, ultimately, we go into this thinking, OK, four points off the playoff places, sitting in eighth. Really, it's against a Preston team that recently have not been scoring goals. And, you know, they drew that game 0-0 against Hull. They beat Wigan 2-1. They drew 0-0 against Coventry. And you think, OK, on paper, should be a winnable one for Watford. After a disappointing result against Sheffield United, you think, all right, now we're going to bounce back. We're going to show a bit of vigour. And the lineup is announced. And you're like, oh, exciting. I like the lineup. Bilic has done a good job. We've got a Rouge starting for once, which is good. You know, think, OK, let's see what he can do. Really get stuck in. We also start... Craig Cathcart at right back. Okay, interesting choice because you've got Gaspar available on the bench. He could play that position. I know that he's been better playing in midfield position for Watford, but you've got Gaspar who's played at right back a lot of his career. But no, we put in a ageing centre-back in right back. Um, obviously, alongside Cathcart, we've got the expected double act of Porteous and... Wesley Hoot, who recently have been really good. Uh, Porteous today was shaky as anything. And Watford are determined to give the ball away for some reason. 
Um, time and time again, playing out from the back, and it's Craig Cathcart or it's Porteous basically taking the goal kick and passing it along the six-yard box. I mean, that's just bound to attract possession for Preston and, and bound to lead to disaster. But, yeah, Porteous today, a couple of times, giving the ball away and, and putting up his opposition players in danger. He just he just looks a little bit off it today, Porteous, and it was a weird one. Um, and Hoot, he was trying. You know, he, he had a couple of times where he made good-headed clearances, but... As I say, had that long shot. There was just nothing on. And that's the problem today. What we're really concerned about today is the fact there was just a lack of movement. Not players supporting each other and helping each other out and calling for the ball or making runs. You know, a player is going to get the ball, they're going to drive with it. But they're all standing and watching. They're not helping each other out. They're not pulling together to work out the the solution. Um, Also, we had... At left back today, um, Morris, he started the game fairly all right. And then a couple of times, he just kind of got blocked off in the corner flag. Um, just basically barged into the referee today. I mean, <laughs> Gavin Ward, he just wasn't having any of it. It was letting everything go and it was getting very frustrating. And I felt it felt harsh on Morris because he got hooked off at half time. And we thought, OK, let's change shape. Brought on a Spreer. And i got to say, he was man of the match today. And that just kind of sums it up because there was very little quality from, from Watford at all. And Preston were poor as well, can I just say. Like, the amount of times Watford surrender possession and a more dangerous and sharp team takes advantage. But Preston today were just a little bit off the boil, so they didn't punish us. But... Ultimately, yeah, as I say, unlucky on, on Morris, but the Spreer comes on, looks so much more willing to take on players and just try something. A bit of running, cutting inside, doing something, making something happen. Um, and we also brought off a Rouge who was just getting muscled off the ball so easily. I mean, I hate to say it, but he's looked a soft touch recently and he's got to be up for the physicality of the championship. You've got to really get stuck into challenges. You know, sometimes you think balls get played into a rouge and it's like a rolling pass and a rouge just waits for it and he doesn't go to it he doesn't seek it and make it his own and meanwhile a centre back comes in behind a rouge gets a toe on it and then we lose the ball because he's got to be ready to fight for it rather than just let it come to him and talking about fighting for it I mean Joao Pedro today was frustrating at times because He's good at driving forward with the ball, but when it comes to winning the ball back, I mean, there's so many occasions today where Pedro can contest a header and he doesn't even get his feet off the ground. He just stands. And you can't do that at this level. You're just going to get punished. You're just going to get dispossessed. And, yeah, it was just a moment of madness, really. So, yeah, not the best performance, unfortunately. But, you know, Morris, not a lot he could do today, I I thought. Um... And then we do a like-for-like change. And it's the 71st minute. And it's like, okay, couldn't we have just started Gaspar and just not made that sub? When we're trying to win a game, is a like-for-like taking off Cathcart for Gaspar really going to make a difference? No. So, you know, whatever. Gaspar comes on. He looked all right, to be fair, when he came on. Um, I thought he looked decent. But the fact is, he should have started. Um, Midfield, Chowdhury today, I thought, was just standard like there was a lot of times where he'd lose the ball but then he'd win it back so he does the job he, he, he goes by in every game he just does what he's expected of nothing more nothing less and next to him loser it was good to have him starting today but we know how good he can be and I think he didn't show that today I think he had occasions where he could have just in the transitions been a bit quicker with his cross cross call cross ball um, you know diagonal ball get the play stretched a little bit and there just wasn't that vision today but he's got the, he's got it in his locker he's just come back from injury but we just didn't see it today and then we talk about Davis I mean Davis came on for a rouge and ultimately didn't really make much more of an impact I mean there was a bit of trying and, and, and a kind of effort to get the ball together but there was just not enough 
end product ultimately. As I say, Pedro is frustrating. Saar, he just went missing today, as did Ken Semmer. I mean, Semmer was brilliant against West Brom. He struggled to impact the game today, though. And then when we took off Morris, it meant a change in shape. So we're basically playing Semmer a lot deeper. And that's not where you want him to be. He's most effective getting to the byline, getting it in. And Saar today just, I don't know, there's something about Saar that just frustrates me because he's a good player, but do we often see passion from him in a performance? No, unfortunately. And that's what today felt like. It felt like players just let the opportunity pass them by, a bit uninterested, and Aspria was the only one who looked really intent on on proving a point. I mean, recently Espria has gone missing, I don't know why, but he injected a bit of energy into a lifeless performance, so he's the only player I can I can offer for man of the match. It was that desperate today. Um, so yeah, really not many chances, uh, it's gotta be said. Not one to live in the memory. And as I say, we've dropped points, we've slipped down to ninth. The gap is still four points to sixth, which is of course the noisy neighbors down the road. But ultimately, with, you know, not many games left this season, we've got 11 more chances at putting in at least a decent performance. Because I don't think we can call that decent today. It was just below par and Preston were also just as bad. So they didn't deserve anything, but they got something. They got a point. But Watford also didn't deserve to win. So it's just one of those ones where... I wish the players had shown a bit more urgency sooner and understood that this was a game that they really needed to win and it just didn't look good enough today. So, really disappointing. Um, got to go back to the drawing board. Um, we've got QPR on Saturday. Um, Gareth Ainsworth, you know, has been brought into that team to try and help them out. They'll be up for it. It's at Loftus Road, so we've got to be up for it. Otherwise, if we put in a performance like that, we will get found out and we will look, drop points. And it just feels like this season's petering out, really. So, yeah, I thought the referee had a bad game and I thought that there was a lot of time wasting from Freddie Woodman. But he should have got booked earlier. You know, it took too long for him to get booked. So, bad, bad match to watch and bad, bad ramifications for Watford going forward. Not looking like a Premier League club, not even looking like a good championship club right now. But you never know. Crazy things happen in football, so it's the hope that kills you. But we move to the Queen's Park Rangers game. Come on, you horns.